and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, we are going to move on now to uh, our next segment. But before we do, uh, it has come to my attention some breaking news did take place. And it is with a heavy heart that I have to even say this and even pull this up right now on social media. But uh, thankfully, we have our colleague Faze just uh, share uh, right now work on this. But first, I want to pull up this first tweet. Uh, this is something I hoped I wouldn't read. Shout out to our colleague E. Heller as well about Stephen Donziger. Breaking. Lawyers for Stephen Donziger criticized the decision to snatch him three days ago from home and lock him up in a halfway house where he can't even go out for air. Uh, urge immediate return to his family. Now, for those of you who don't know who Stephen Donziger is, again, let's also uh, acknowledge that no U.S. attorney has ever, uh, again, so uh, no, U, uh, no attorney in the U.S. has ever been treated this way. Uh, again, I'm pulling this link open right now. Uh, it's from his lawyers uh, about what's happening to him and this case as this thing loads up. I do want to at least give time to, hopefully we'll be able to be accessible very soon. So there we go. I will be reading it right now. Um, <clears throat> as it stands right now, the legal team, okay, on February 9th at 7.30 in the morning, Stephen Donziger was told he must report uh, to a halfway house in the Bronx in person and to bring closing. Since that time, he has remained uh, confined and not afforded any of the normal privileges, outdoor activity, departing the premises, uh, et cetera, given to other detainees in the same facility. No explanation was provided as to the reason uh, for his renewed detention. The legal team, along with representatives from Amnesty International, were finally informed after a full day of inquiry that Mr. Donziger was under investigation, accused of spending time in his own apartment building outside of his actual apartment. So, uh, undoubtedly, Mr. Donziger's advocacy has been a source of retaliation. Further incarceration hinders Mr. Donziger's ability to continue his work in bringing attention and justice to the indigenous people and rural farmers deliberately poisoned by Chevron in Ecuador. It is not lost on us that Mr. Donziger was forced from his home into a locked facility just days before uh, the anniversary of the historic pollution judgment against Chevron on February 14th. Due to Mr. Donziger's outstanding compliance with his conditions of home confinement, his ankle monitor was removed on February 4th, signaling a less restrictive approach by the BOP. The alleged violation occurred prior to the ankle bracelet removal, making the timing of his reincarceration even more suspect. The Bureau of Prisons has an opportunity to self-correct and immediately restore Mr. Donziger to home confinement to serve out the last 10 weeks of the unprecedented six months misdemeanor sentence. We remind the BOP that no attorney in US in, in, in US history has been sentenced to six months in jail for contempt of court, and Mr. Donziger's detention has been ruled a violation of multiple provisions of international law by the United Nations. This is a legal team. I had hope that maybe this nightmare would have been ended for Stephen Donziger, but yet there he is behind bars again. So what can we take away from this? There is justice for the rich. The rich are able to dictate the laws. And if you stand up against them or if you stand up against the political establishment or corporate media, you will be punished. This is why we need to have free speech. This is why we have to avoid censorship. This is why we have to break away from it. To our viewing audience, we have to demand the release of Stephen Donziger. I remember reporting on how he had to cut off his ankle bracelet and what kind of joy it was. But now, once again, here he is behind bars. It's injustice. 